One year ago today, Ronnie Turiaf's senior season at Gonzaga ended abruptly as the third-seeded Zags were dropped by sixth-seeded Texas Tech. But as Rachel Nichols tells us, nothing could prepare the forward from the French-speaking island of Martinique for what lied ahead. They say life can change in a heartbeat. I just graduated from college. I was feeling good by myself. Everything was going the right way. I was training. I was going to get drafted. I was going to have a nice little perfect life. And then, bam, life hit you. Roni Turiaf played four seasons at Gonzaga before the Lakers made him their second round pick in the 2005 draft. He even signed a million dollar contract. Then, he took the Lakers team physical. What did they tell you? Well, that my heart was about three times as big as normal. Pretty much that I either have to stop playing basketball and take medicine or have surgery. So the trust was pretty simple for me. There was nothing simple about his situation. Turiaf was diagnosed with an ascending aortic aneurysm. Doctors recommended open heart surgery to fix the potentially fatal condition. The worst case scenario is that the thinning and weakened uh, aortic wall can rupture, can actually tear, and the blood then is leaking out of the aneurysm and one could die from that. You know, it's tough. I'm gonna get through it. I'm gonna have something that's in my heart, but I'm gonna be back. Everything was falling apart. The Lakers voided Turiaf's contract. Doctors rushed him into surgery at Stanford Medical Center, where his family and former coaches gathered. I'll never, ever forget the moment when he finally went under, and then you just don't know, you know? And it was a good eight hours later, we got the news that it went okay, and that was about the best news you could ever possibly hope to have. I had tubes in my stomach, I had tubes in my throat, I had tubes everywhere. So I think at that time, Mitch didn't think I was going to play basketball again. Lakers GM Mitch Kupchak certainly had his doubts when he hand-delivered a jersey to Turiaf's room two days after the surgery. He really couldn't open his eyes, you know, more than a crack, and he couldn't talk at all. And he pretty much just indicated with his finger that he wanted the jersey on the wall. I had him put that jersey right in front of my bed, so every time I would look at him, I would give myself some strength to just push myself so I could make it to the basketball court. So that jersey had a lot of meaning to me, yeah. The gesture was not an empty one. Just four months after the surgery, Turiaf was practicing once more. Five months later, he was playing for a CBA team in Yakima, Washington. By January, Turiaf finally got the call the Lakers wanted to offer him a new contract. I came two minutes afterwards. I just ran, came over, signed the contract real quick, and I was like, ah, oh, yes. Why'd you rush so much? Because I don't want anything bad to happen. I don't want to get hit by lightning or get run over by a car. So I just wanted to go over there, sign the contract, and just feel part of a team, feel part of something going forward. Turiaf has played sparingly since his NBA debut in February. And while he wears a small pad under his jersey to protect his sternum, doctors say he's no more at risk than any other NBA player. In fact, Turiaf is so comfortable moving his body that even when he's not playing, he's very active. Some of his enthusiasm, I think, is because you know, he's been given kind of a new life as an NBA player. In that situation, I think you see your career going before your eyes. And he feels real lucky to be back here. It's really true that anything can happen to anybody at any time. I knew it, but I felt it. I felt it. 